This presentation is an introduction to handling uncertainties in linear graphs. You'll learn how to show uncertainties in graphical data and how to determine uncertainties in the slope and y-intercept. Error bars are the way that measurement uncertainties show up on a graph. When the slope and y-intercept are determined from a graph, they also have uncertainties. If the error bars are too small to show up on a graph, there should be a note to explain. The error bars on a point produce a rectangle which represent the possible values of both variables for that measurement. Here's a point shown with error bars. There are error bars in both x and y directions. Sometimes there may be no error bars in one direction, or there could be different error bars in the positive and negative directions. How the uncertainties in the slope and y-intercept are calculated depend on how the data points fit the graph. There are two possible cases. With big enough error bars, you have the first case. With small enough error bars, you have the second case. The slope and y-intercept both have units. The y-intercept has the units of the y variable, and the slope has the units of y divided by the units of x. If the error bars are big, or if the scatter of points is small, then the line of best fit will cross the error bars for every data point. This means the uncertainties are limited by the measuring instruments. You can find two other lines which cross all of the error bars, one with the maximum possible slope and one with the minimum possible slope. In the other case, the error bars are small or the scatter is big, so no line can be drawn touching all the error bars. Note that the line with the maximum slope will give the minimum value for the y-intercept and vice versa. For a positive slope, the line of maximum slope will go from the lower right of some point to the upper left of some other point. The line of minimum slope will go from the upper right, upper left of some point to the lower right of some other point. Here you can see the actual coordinates. For a negative slope, the change should be obvious. Don't assume the points used for maximum slope and minimum slope will be at the ends of the graph, or even that they'll be the same. Once you've got the maximum minimum slope values for the slope and y-intercept, you can calculate the uncertainties simply. When no line crosses all of the error bars, you have a different situation. The scatter of the points suggests ranges for the slope and y-intercept. Just like the standard deviation for a single variable, with two variables you get a standard error of the y-intercept and a standard error of the slope.
These standard errors represent the uncertainties in their respective quantities. Using the maximum value for the y-intercept and the slope give us an upper bound for our data. Using the minimum value for the y-intercept and the slope give us a lower bound for our data. Take a look at the next few examples for some made-up data. With large scatter, then the standard errors become the uncertainties. With small scatter, scatter, the standard errors aren't used. The most important thing to remember is that how you determine the uncertainties in the slope and the y-intercept depend on the scatter of the data.